In today's video, we're looking at possibly one of the best 20x20 20 20 ESCs to run 6S for quite a while. So I'm calling this the king of 20x20s 20 20s in terms of noise testing. And what we're looking at today is a new product from T-Motor, which is a T-Motor F55 amp 6S4132 bit mini, which is the ultra power. Now, before we jump into the results, let's quickly take a look at some of the accessories and talk about some of the dimensions and weight of this thing. And before we jump into that, a word from our sponsor. PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCBWay is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. So today we're looking at the 20x20 20 20 ESC from T-Motor. This is a really recent one that has just been released. And let's take a look at some of the accessories before we jump into the specifications like dimensions, also some of the components used on board and everything you might want to know. So first thing, they do provide you with an XT60. That is, uh, they know for a fact you'll be setting this up on a large quadcopter. So this is a really great sign to see out of the box here. Now this was only tested with a low ESR capacitor because the low ESR capacitor comes pre-installed and it's highly recommended to always run a low ESR capacitor. Now if we take a look at some of the accessories provided, they give you a normal cable. This would work only if you had another T-Motor uh, model flight controller that you'd be able to connect this ESC to directly with this connector. However, they've also given you a spare connector that has already been terminated with these little clips and you can choose what header you want to use or the type of connector you need for your specific flight controller, which is really nice. You just route these to the correct place and you'll be good to go. Very thoughtful. The only company that was doing that before was uh, Maytech, I remember. And now I see a lot of proper companies do that as well. And they also provide us with five rubber gummies here. Now this is an M2 hole uh, ESC. And uh, if you don't use the gummies, it's actually an M3. So you can do what you want here. But um, it's really great that they provided these because nothing would really spin inside. So you would need these spacers here. And they give you a total of 10 of these. Uh, five of them are a bit larger than the other ones. You can tell there's another baggie here with smaller ones. So they give you a total of 10 here. Now if we move all this stuff to the side, let's talk about the dimensions here and also the weight because obviously that is a very important fact here. Now for weight, this thing is 15 grams, which is pretty insane with the heatsink. As you can tell, the heatsink is only on one side and they are using the big fets. You can have a close glimpse right there and you can tell the board is also conformal coated, which again is really nice. And the low ESR capacitor is a proper Rubicon 470 low ESR capacitor. Now the dimensions here, I've taken different uh, measurements so you can see which one would work best for you. And what do I mean by that? Well, with the capacitor, without the capacitor and everything of that nature. So if we're talking about length here, from here to, to these little motor outputs right there, we have 40 millimeters in length. With the capacitor, it goes up to 57 millimeters. So from here to here, 57 millimeters. In width, we have 35 millimeters from this edge to this edge. And in height from the highest points, it's seven millimeters. So it would be from this little uh, inductor to the highest point of the heatsink right here is seven millimeters. And again, it is 15 grams, which is really light. And this is one that I'd highly recommend. This is actually, I think the first time I've ever recommended a 20 by 20 for a five inch full fledged 6S setup, which is pretty insane. And T-Motor did a hell of a job here. And um, yeah, that's, that's some nice stuff right there. So this is really great to see here. And if you're curious, this is a 32-bit ESC, so it runs BL Heli 32 out of the box, and we do have a nice, beautiful, fat heatsink for protection and also heat dissipation. Now let's go ahead and jump into the testing results and uh, take a look at this bad boy right here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the results here. So on the left here, we're looking at both of these tests, first of all, are with the low ESR capacitor that's provided because it's pre-installed and most people will just install it the same way it is. Now what we're looking on the left here, what we're looking at on the left here is the throttle uh, noise. So we test the throttle noise at each level. So for example, here's 10% throttle, here's 25, here's 50, 75, and 100% throttle. And this one here is simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. So basically I just have a script that does a super aggressive flight, which a human can't. And we stress test it and see how good it tests if it blows up or anything weird starts to happen. And that's what we see here. Now again, both of these are done with the low ESR capacitor. Now, first of all, what I want to take your attention on, don't forget this is a 20 by 20 ESC. 
And usually ESCs are very noisy at the 75% throttle range. That's why we get these things called mid-throttle oscillations that if you can't tune out, more than likely it's due to noise touching the gyro and the flight controller or some electromagnetic interference due to that noise. Now here, you can see that the difference between 50 and 75% throttle is insane. Now another thing to look at in this graph right here is there are no weird jitters, hiccups, skips, anything which is really nice. What you would tend to see is like something that would like, like just do some weird lines like that. Here, it was absolutely smooth. Like this is the smoothest 20 by 20 ESC I've tested and it just performed insane. No hiccups. I didn't have to redo any of the tests and I was quite surprised, honestly, with this thing. I was not expecting this. Now, if we look at the values here, uh, we had a peak to peak of five volts. So the noise was just five volts up and down, which is totally acceptable, very acceptable. Some ESCs could do that for 10 volts and above on throttle noise level, especially the 75% area mark. But this right here proves that it's absolutely insane, at least in terms of this testing currently. Now, if we move along to the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers, we had a peak to peak voltage of 7.2 volts, which is totally acceptable here. And what you always want to see is you want to see these lines as thin as possible because this represents the voltage fluctuating up and down in about, uh, I think, uh, how many seconds was this? Anyways, every square this way is 500 milliseconds currently. So you can see how much change happens in 500 milliseconds right there through the motors, the ESCs and everything. So it is a very harsh stress test here. Now, 7.2 volts for a 20 by 20 and, and no hiccups is insane. It literally insane. I have yet to see anything like this. Not only that, check out the max voltage spike. 17.6 volts. It just went up to a maximum of 17.6. And what does that mean? Well, we are at 16.8 voltage so that went up around just basically less than a volt if I calculated. Yeah, less than a volt, which is, it's pretty crazy, actually. I mean, I don't know what else to say here. So that's a good sign right there. Also, the minimum voltage drop was 10.4 volts, which is totally acceptable. And not only that, I could see what's really going on with the motor. And you'd be like, well, what the hell does that mean? Well, I could see here, for example, probably around 10% throttle. Boom, this voltage drop right there was 100% throttle from the script. And here, probably around 35% throttle that it went up right there. And then it went back up, rested a little bit, and again. And it does all kinds of other crazy stuff in there. Now, you could totally see what's going on with the motors. And obviously, it's not going to perform, or the noise isn't going to be as good as something of a 30 by 30 with a ton of capacitors. But this is by far the one I would recommend for a 6S full-fledged 5S setup, or 6S setup, sorry about that. And um, I am fully 100% behind it. And this is definitely going on a, a large build of mine, a very demanding build to be exact. And I want to see how this thing actually performs. So um, currently this has huge potential and um, that's all I could really say currently. So everything's linked down below. Make sure you check them out. I have 7% coupon links uh, if you want to go ahead and check those out as well. And uh, come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways and you get access to a bunch of cool stuff. And also check out Ask FPV if you have any issues FPV related. It's an application I've released, no ads, no bullshit, and you get help immediately. So all that stuff is linked down below. Make sure you check them out. That does support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.